Hey folks, it's Leo Alderpold again, and uh, this is uh, the third video in as many days, uh, which is uh, really breaking, breaking a usual pattern for me. But um, I'm going to talk about something a little bit different today, actually. Um, It's not pipe and tobacco related, so um, yeah, I mean, you guys in the YTPC, if you're not interested, just turn off, go somewhere else, enjoy your day, that's fine. Um, uh, but what this video is about actually is um, is truck life, van life, that sort of thing. Um, and what prompted me to do it uh, was that um, I was scrolling through my social media feed earlier on today, um, when um, I noticed that one of the groups that I'm in on Facebook Somebody had posted a um, a YouTube video of a guy who he runs a channel over here. Um, he's a, an English fella. Um, he's a truck dweller like myself. Um, part of the van life hashtag van life um, community, whatever you want to call it. And he's going through some serious problems right now. Um, has mental health issues as many many people do um but it was in a particularly bad place today and i think the video that he posted was a bit of a cry for help which um i've been watching my feed uh, and, and and yeah basically putting a bit of a shout out to find out where the guy is and what how he's doing and you know, general sort of check up on his uh, welfare i don't know him at all myself but um but i can certainly relate to a lot of the things he was talking about in his video um so it prompted me really to to kind of uh, pick up on something that um a number of people have, have commented uh, to me about um uh, because i mean i've lived this life one way or another for ever since i was old enough to leave home um apart from the period of time that i was uh after i finished university and i got a responsible job um with a forestry commission and I ended up working for them for 11 years and, you know, I was uh, living with partners or whatever um, in houses. Um, so, I, you know, I, I didn't I, I lived off the road for, for a long time, over a decade. Uh, and it's something I've returned to relatively recently because that, that's something that my uh, my circumstances have afforded, uh, which has been great. And it, for me, it's returning back to my roots. It's um, uh, very much along that that sort of vein, um, but a lot of people comment. They they look at uh, they look at my truck. Uh, they look at me, you know, living in the woods, whatever it happens to be, and they think, oh God, Leo, you know, they make these comments. Leo, you're 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 living the dream, you know, you're living the dream. Um, really pleased for you. You live a really good life. Blah blah blah, and that's great. And and you know that is it's really heartening to hear that from people. Absolutely. But I think what um, one of the things I want to really make clear in this video is that uh, the hashtag truck life, van life, hashtag seems to have uh, replaced in modern parlance the use of parentheses, <laughs> which is interesting. But this lifestyle is not an easy one at all. It looks idyllic. And yeah, uh, in some respects, absolutely it's fantastic in a lot of ways it's fantastic but it is not without its hardships and that really cannot be understated overstated sorry uh, and i'll tell you for, i'll give you a bit of background first just to give some context so when i relight really my pipe So anyway, um, personally, I've traveled most of my life. Uh, I was born in a different country. I grew up very much as, you know, in an army family. Um, so we never really spent longer than a year or so anywhere when I was a child. And it's probably one of the things that contributed to, uh, to me having itchy feet and wanting to be kind of on the move, wanting to see different places, travel the world, you know, and do what I do, what I've done with my life to date. Um, and then 
after my parents divorce um I settled on the south coast of England for a while until I was old enough to leave home. And the first thing I did when I left home was to go on the road. And back in those days, um, I was on foot. I was literally just living out of a rucksack. I remember packing my rucksack um, and um, and it was a British Army Bergen, uh, PLCE Bergen, um, in one pouch on one side of the rucksack. I had uh, a whole bunch of cassette tapes and a Sony Walkman and a little pair of speakers. On the other side of uh, the Bergen in the side pouch, I had some books. Um, I had some clothes, a sleeping bag, some various other bits and bobs in the main compartment of the rucksack. And I had my guitar and I just went on the road on foot. And I ended up living out in the woods for, uh, crikey, uh, well, would have been 18 months, two years something like that, effectively living out of a tent or a bender or a shelter made out of tarpaulin. Uh, until the time came when I got together with a girl and decided I needed to get my driving license um, because I wanted to provide a home for us both. Uh, so we bought a truck. We bought our first van. Um, I think I was probably about 21, 22 years old at that time. Um, and, uh, and and the two of us went on the road. Eventually, when I got my license, we went on the road. Um, so I then lived for years afterwards. I lived in a collection of vehicles or on sites in benders, teepees, wiki ups, you know, whatever you happen to call it, a variety of different ways. But I've always been on the road until I went to university. So traveling people have existed since time immemorial. Um, it's always been a part of the culture. Anywhere you live in the world, anywhere you live in the world, there are traveling people. Um, they may be Romani. Um, they may be, as is very often the case here in the UK, in this country, the New Age travelers, which I was certainly a member of that community back in the 1990s. Um, and now you've got different people who are living this lifestyle for a whole bunch of different reasons. And it is a difficult lifestyle because wherever you go, you get treated with suspicion. You get treated with a degree of derision. People will, will think, why don't you get a house? Uh, why don't you get a proper house, a proper job? Why aren't you living the way that I live, the way that we ex society expects us to live? And there's a lot of reasons why people don't do that. A lot of us just choose to live this way. I personally choose to live this way because I like the freedom that it gives me. I work. I pay my taxes. I do the same thing as everybody else does. But I choose to live a way that's slightly different. Because it makes me happy. Um, and that's the case for most people who do it. But, as I say, it is an idyllic lifestyle in some respects but it is certainly not one which is for the faint-hearted. Because, and I'll give you an example here. Um, my first truck was a, an old Mark II transit van, Luton horse box. It uh, only had a roll-up back door. And the only window in it was at the front, above the cab, in the Luton area of the cab. Um, so even in the dead of winter, um, we had to sit with a back door rolled up if we wanted to have the view of outside a window, effectively. <laughs> Which was fine because the wood burner was really hot. So even in the depths of winter, you could still sit comfortably in a pair of shorts by the burner. And at that time, I was as green as grass. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, the head gasket on the um, on the truck went. Um, big ends in the engine seized up. Engine fucked. Had to replace the engine. Now, let me tell you, when that happens and it's your home and you're at the side of the road with nowhere to go, it is not a nice place to be. 
It's a very hard place to be. <laughs> and I've been in that situation on more than one occasion. Um, so you trade that freedom, uh, or correction, you trade a kind of freedom um, for a kind of security that you, you don't have if you live in a house and you pay rent or you pay mortgage or whatever. Um, the other thing is, is, uh, yeah, uh, I love being parked right where I am at the moment. I've got the woodlands. I've got a nice fire pit outside. I've got all of that stuff. Um, but I'm only going to be here for a while and then I'll have to move on somewhere else. And I don't know what that next place that I'm going to move on to is going to be like or how long I'm going to stay there. Yesterday, um, I need water. Um, so I have to get on my bike, put a 25 litre, um, canister of water on my back, ride my bike up to a place just up the road, a churchyard where there's usually a standpipe, fill up my water there. And I have to do that a couple of times so that I have water for washing, cook cooking, cleaning. Um, and that creates problems, you know. It's something that one has to do, uh, that you have to work in around your day-to-day -day life. At this precise moment, we've got some rain, and it's been raining pretty hard for the last couple of hours, although it's stopped now. Um, the bulkhead of my truck, uh, where it's joined onto the cab, where I've got a little hatch that goes through to the cab, leaks, um, which means all of the wood panelling around the bulkhead which is where I rest my head when I go to bed at night, um, is beginning to leak and rot. Um, so I need to locate that leak, do some woodwork and carpentry, fix it, that sort of thing. Um, then you've got the issue of the authorities. Now, no country is a free country. I don't give one tiny shit what people in the States say. Um... <laughs> We do not live in a free society. Everywhere you go, there are rules and regulations to which you have to adhere to some degree or another. Um, over here, the main one are the planning regulations. So over here, strictly speaking, you can't stay anywhere for longer than 28 days on private land with permission. Now, put that in the context of parking up at a roadside or in a bit of land that's not your own, um, and a lot of the travellers that I know, um, they will park up in a what we call a green lane, so next to a hedgerow down a little quiet country road somewhere, not bothering anybody. Um, it's effectively part of the public highway. Um, you will get the council coming round, and they will begin eviction proceedings, um, which is a whole process you have to go through. The point is, when you are a traveller, you have to remain travelling. You can't stop anywhere for very long, because it's just not the way it works, unfortunately. We do not live in a free society. It's difficult. Um, so that's another aspect. Now, I have... Uh, compromised in the space in my vehicle because I like to ride a motorbike. So a significant part of the back end of my truck is my motorbike carriage, which means it allows me to take my bike wherever I go, which is great, but it means I'm sacrificing space in my living area. So I have to make a compromise. Now, I've got to the age where I don't like going out to have to dig a hole in the woods in the middle of the night if I need to take a dump. So I've got a compost toilet behind here, and that's that's kind of like my luxury. What I don't have is a shower or a bath. So when I wash, um, I have to heat water, uh, a, a, a sizable quantity of water, which if you're doing it on a gas cooker or something, is just impractical. So it's always done on either the fire or if it's the winter on my wood burner. And then I strip wash in front of the wood burner inside the living space or if it's the summertime at the moment 
I'll go and do it outdoors. Um, but it's another thing. It's just one of those other things that even taking a wash, um, you have to actually kind of so you you have to be sorted out you have to be geared up to do it you know you have to have the water you have to have the firewood you you know it, it's uh it, it's almost like a ritual in a way i like it i like having to uh, wash outside i love it there's nothing nicer than you know um on a sunny afternoon heating a load of water on the fire having a good old strip wash um and then drying in the sun naked it's brilliant but in the in the depths of winter it ain't so nice i can tell you <laughs> So, yeah, so all of these things, they add up, they add up, they add up. And this is a stressful life, make no mistake about it. Living in a truck, living in a van, van's even worse. It's a much smaller space than I'm living in. I've got an enormous living space comparative to other people who live this lifestyle. Um, I planned it that way deliberately. I knew what I was doing because I've done it a lot. <laughs> um, but living in this kind of lifestyle is not easy. It isn't easy. Um, you make it's like everything else in life. You make a cost benefit analysis. It's an economic evaluation. You're weighing up the pros and the cons, uh, what you're trading in terms of comfort, luxury, access to services, access to a social life, uh, and all of these things with the freedom uh, that living this lifestyle gives you. And not everybody is cut out to do it. Um, some people don't get on with it. But even if, like myself, you do get on with this lifestyle, it's still hard. It takes its toll mentally and physically on you. Um, it's not an easy option. It's not an easy option. But, like everything else in life, it's horses for courses. Whatever works for you, that's what you do. That's what you should do it. What, what gives you the greatest sense of satisfaction, um, the greatest sense that you're, you're kind of living to use this really fucking annoying uh, expression that's become quite popular these days, uh, living your best life. <laughs> um, but it is always, always, always a trade-off. You're always sacrificing one thing for another. So to those of you guys who kind of look at the lifestyle that I'm leaving, leading and and, and comment hey you're living the dream there thanks i appreciate it i you know i enjoy my life i like this life that's why i do it but don't for a moment think that it's an easy one to live uh if i'm looking like i'm a bit bedraggled it's because i i had to go and get petrol for my generator early on um and it's raining so i had to go out on the motorbike ride mm, it's about 10 miles to the nearest petrol station from here um and it pissed down and i got soaked <laughs> so now i'm sitting here in my wet motorbike gear <laughs> uh, talking to you guys but it's okay you know because if i was living in a house i'd have a different set of problems to deal with so the point of this video partially was to show solidarity to a chap that I've never heard of, never met in my life. Um, but um, when I saw that video on Facebook earlier on, and I followed the, uh, uh, the, the link to his YouTube channel, everything he was saying I could completely relate to. He's having a hard time. Um, and I can relate to that. I really can. But I think to kind of finish this, uh, crikey, almost 20 minutes of a ramble um, on this lifestyle, 
Um, like with the YouTube pipe community, like with everything else, there is actually a community out there of people who will look after you if you really need it. Um, and very shortly after I started putting about um, some posts on a few groups I was in on Facebook, trying to inquire, uh, reposting his video, calling out for, um, you know, for people, if they happen to be in his area, to check up on him, blah, blah. Um, people had set up a GoFundMe page. Um, people had jumped in their cars and driven 25 miles to go and find him and make sure he's okay. And that is pretty much what I was describing in the last couple of videos. This thing about social responsibility, this thing about looking after each other. Now, in this day and age of social media, where we're only really communicating to each other in these little snippets on social media, via YouTube, for example, it's really easy to get into this little clique, this little bubble of just those who agree. And actually what you find is, if you shift focus from one thing to another thing, you'll find another community, and another, and another, and another. So, what that means is that actually, when you take all of those things that make us up as individuals, our interests, our um, views, um, political leanings or whatever, you sweep all of that stuff aside. Regardless of who you are or where you are, whatever you happen, whatever your interests happen to be, there is a community of people out there who will look after you, who will look out for you. You are a part of that community. You have a duty and a responsibility to look out for your neighbours, your friends, your family, but also those that you perhaps bump into in a street. You don't know their story. You don't know anything about them. But maybe there's something about that person that's a lot like, a lot like you. So the reason I am politically leaning the way that I am is because I give a shit about other people. Now, this is not a political video, far from it. But community is community. Um, and we need to be looking out for each other. We need when whatever happens in our lives to know that somebody out there has got our back one way or another. We might not have any family um, to speak of or the family that we do have maybe miles away from us. We might be living a lifestyle like I do, uh, which means I'm on my own for most of the time. And make no mistake, I like it that way. It's, it's not an accident. But we all need people, one way or another. We all need people. So we need to be looking out for people all the time. Um, and by doing so, we create a community where we know that people will look out for us as well. Now, this isn't hippie bullshit. This is logic. It's just logic. If you want to get it down to the raw facts, it's just fucking logical. You can, you can call it quid pro quo. <laughs> but whatever it is, we need to be looking after each other a little bit. So yeah, uh, that's kind of it. That's that's yeah, twenty five minutes almost now. Uh, that's the extent of this video. It's a little bit about 
that uh, living this this life, this truck life, van life, whatever you want to call it, is not, you know, living the dream. Yes, it's living a dream. Um, but for a lot of people in the world, so is going uh, being able to go to the supermarket and have ten fucking kinds of soup on the shelf. You know, that's a dream for some people. You know, we have to count our blessings where we have them. But it's also a tough life. And it can be a lonely one. Um, but it's always important to remember that wherever you are, whatever situation you're in, one way or another, there are people out there who will come and look after you. You just need to be able to reach out. Uh, and you need to be a part of that community. Anyway, that's my thought for the day. Uh, I'm probably going to put a couple of hashtags uh, when I upload this so that it goes out to a slightly wider community than the YTPC. But you folks take care. I'll catch you again soon.